Hello and welcome to the Ready to Bloom podcast with your host Holly Wharton. Ready to Bloom helps heart-centered women entrepreneurs to overcome their fears, blocks and limiting beliefs so they can be more successful in business. As a heart-centered business owner, you do amazing work. Holly's mission in life is to help you help more people. Help us help more women in business with a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute to leave one today over at iTunes. The more women who find out about this podcast, the more we can help women in business. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Ready to Bloom podcast, episode 83. This is your host, Holly Wharton. I'm here with today's special guest, Flora Boley. Flora is an internationally celebrated painter, teacher, author, and inspirationalist. Her visionary approach to the creative process invites brave, spontaneous expression back into the creative process while honoring the connection between mind, body, and spirit. Blending over 20 years of professional painting experience with her background as a yoga instructor, healer, and lifelong joy seeker, Flora's art and transformational retreats are brimming with soul, passion, and possibility. Welcome, Flora. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have you here today. (laughs) So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and your journey to how you got to where you are today with your creative business, because what you do have is is a business. Yes, it, it really is. It's interesting. You know, you start out uh, just wanting to be an artist and then you realize there's a whole lot more to it. So <laughs> yeah, my, my journey has taken on a couple distinct phases um, in that I, I really did start just as a, a visual artist, as a painter, uh, painting a lot of original work, selling in galleries and well, eventually selling in galleries. And then over the last four or so years, I've really transitioned quite a bit into more teaching. So I teach in-person workshops as well as online work- painting workshops. And I also wrote a book called Brave Intuitive Painting in 2012. So that was a great catalyst in many ways to, to sort of launch my whole teaching chapter. And I do a bit of art licensing as well with my work. So it's, it's taken on quite a robust <laughs> amount of, you know, avenues that, that it's, it's all, it all comes back to painting ultimately, but um, I definitely work with it in a few different ways now. Mm. And at what point in your journey did you realize that this creative adventure that you were on had actually become a business? You know, I'm, I think I'm one of those people that, is just a born entrepreneur. I haven't had a lot of blocks in that department. I, you know, I was, I was a kid who tried to sell like every little, you know, thing I made just cause I thought it was fun. <laughs> and, and so I'm always really grateful that, that that's just a part of who I am. So when, when it came to the business part of, of my art career, it was a pretty natural extension for me in that I was never, I just never was too afraid to put myself out there. And I, I sort of got a kick out of the business side of things, like getting the mailing list and, and sending out the emails. And, and, you know, nowadays it's so much about social media. And I just, I just see it as, a, as a really a, another creative act. And I've always tried to be creative and a bit out of the box in how I, in how I run my business. So while I've never had like a master business plan, which I've probably shouldn't say, but it's true. Um, I've really, you know, I've really been highly engaged in the business process the whole way through and, and kind of, you know, it's not my favorite part of it. I definitely prefer painting, but I don't, I don't dread it. And I just, again, I I see it as another form of expression in a lot of ways. Mm, And I think that's really unique because I think a lot of artists and other creatives really struggle with the business side of things because they really just want to be creating. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a lot of fear around rejection, you know, or, or, you know, putting out this very soulful, deep part of yourself and, and how vulnerable that can feel. And I really get that. And I also think it's just important to, to not allow, you know, outside influence and outside opinion to get in the way of your process. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I actually had a big rejection story in that I didn't get into any of the grad schools I tried to get into I, as a painter, as a painting student. Mm -hmm. And I was devastated at the time because I thought, you know, okay, I had the the undergrad and now I need the, you know, masters if I want to keep moving forward in the art world. And what I really realized was that by not getting into those schools, I was forced to 
just continue doing art on my own. And through the process of self-exploration and just lots and lots and lots of painting, I came up with a really unique process, which is really true to me. And it's something that now I share with other people. And I, I feel really, I just feel really grateful that that process was born out of my own experience. So I don't know, I just, I just offer that as a, as an example of, you know, if you do get rejected or, or have, you know, opposing opinions about what you're putting out there. It's, it's, it's not always a bad thing. You know, it can move you in good directions and, and solidify what you, what you really believe in, you know? Yeah, definitely. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about your unique process? Because I think the way that you approach painting and the way that you teach painting is very, very different to how I think if anyone else out there has, has gone to a painting course or any other kind of art course, it's very, very different. Yes, it does tend to be pretty different than most things. Well, at the foundation of the process lies a, an understanding that we don't know what the painting will be before we start. So it's very counter to this idea of you know painting a landscape or a bowl of fruit or uh, something that's in our mind already or something that we're looking at. So I really encourage my students to let go of those preconceived ideas in order to make space and open up to the mystery of the moment and the magic that really happens when we're able to let go of planning. You know, it's a very much a metaphor to life in so many ways too. It's like if we can if we can, you know, have a day where it's not all planned out, oftentimes if we're specifically paying attention to our intuition and allowing ourselves to move through the world in that way, really interesting things tend to happen. So it's the same with the painting process. I, I give my students enough, you know, art school type foundational information in terms of color and tools and mark making so that they feel comfortable moving paint around. But then I really focus on listening in and trusting and this idea of working with what's working. So, you know, trying a lot of different things and then stepping back and asking yourself, what's working in this painting so far? Like what colors do I like or what's what's interesting? And then allowing that to lead you forward. And it just allows you to, you know, stay in the flow and keep things moving versus, you know, a lot of times like an art school critique, you step back and you say, what's not working here? <laughs> and you focus on that. <laughs> and so I try to turn that around and just say, let's go with what feels good. Let's go with what, what feels interesting, what's, you know, where your curiosity is leading you. Um, and also embracing this idea of being brave and sort of stepping out of your comfort zone and doing things that you might have a little inkling to do, but feel, you know, you might feel unsure. Like I really encourage my students to follow those things because again, a lot of interesting things happen when you step out of your comfort zone. So that's sort of the idea with the painting process and how it ends up looking is really different for each person. Um, my paintings are, you know, pretty colorful, lots and lots of layers. I do, the process does rely heavily on layers so that it's acrylic paint and between each layer it dries. So every time you step up to the canvas, you can change directions, do something new, you know, even turn your canvas upside down, like just again, staying present to what's interesting and what's happening like right now. So, um, yeah, that the, my students create all kinds of different paintings. Some are realistic, some are not realistic, like a, you know, perfectly rendered type of realism you might think mm -hmm. of, but some have lots of imagery that's recognizable. Some are totally abstract. A lot are somewhere in between those worlds. And, um, yeah, it's really it's really great to see a lot. A lot of my students show up and they've never painted before, so they don't have any kind of, you know, real art school experience. And that is actually a really wonderful way to start because you're not like unlearning anything. Mm -hmm. You're just coming with more of a childlike curiosity, and you know, it's um, people are always amazed at what they create when they just sort of can step out of their own way and allow what wants to come through, come through. Mm. And what do your students struggle with the most when they're getting started with painting? You know, there's two things and it really depends on the person. So if a person comes in and they are more of, I don't want to say control freak, but do you know what I mean? Like a person, <laughs> but I'll just say, a control freak. Just say it. <laughs> uh, yeah, someone who just like likes things tidy. They want to know what's happening. They have a plan. Like that's how they are in life, Right that type of person often bumps up against 
some struggle with letting go and not knowing and the chaos and the messiness and just that like being in the middle of a process. A lot of people want to be at the end of the process Mm -hmm. before they're at the end of the process. So I would say that's a struggle for sure. Just like the letting go and, and accepting the that you don't know where it's going. And then the other end of that spectrum is someone who's actually really comfortable in that, you know, throwing paint around kind of feeling, but they might struggle more with making decisions that eventually will bring a painting together because that's another piece of this process. It's not just, you know, wild, free, woohoo, kind of <laughs> splashing like, the paint around. <laughs> yeah. Like, That's certainly an element, but then there's also, it's just like life again, where, you know, there's a time to make a choice, you know, and decide I'm going to use this shape or I'm going to use this color. I'm going to make my painting a a lot more dark or whatever the choice is. You have to make those choices in order for the painting to move forward or, you know, in order for your life to move forward. But the real key, and this is sort of the key of the whole process is to make those strong commitments while simultaneously staying open to change. Mm. And that's where things get interesting. (laughs) That's where, you know, a lot of life lessons can really start to emerge. And um, knowing that you can change your mind, you know, and you can can try something on and go that direction for a while. And then you can say, you know what, that's actually not working for me and I'm going to try this other thing on. And like this painting process really supports all of it which is really neat. So it sounds like there's so many parallels to the way you teach art in the way we live life and the way we run our businesses. Do you bring, do you discuss these things when you see people struggling with their art or how does that come into play? Because there's just so many parallels. (laughs) Oh my God. I can just like geek out all day long about the metaphors and it's just something (laughs) that I love. I love it. I love that painting is so tangible, you know, and that what I offer is in many ways a course about life, but that it that we get to practice with paint. I think that that creates a really powerful scenario where we can really, you know, literally get our hands dirty and be working with a canvas that's, you know, it's only, I always tell my students, it's just a canvas, it's just paint, you know? Mm-hmm. There's no, nothing to really get to worried about here. Worst case um, scenario, however, you paint over it and you start again. <laughs> exactly. It's like so forgiving. It's so <laughs> forgiving. You know, it's not like we're sculpting in marble here, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I think that there's great lessons that emerge. I do touch on them a lot throughout my workshop. I do a lot to set the stage for that with having intention and creating sort of a sacred container for the process to emerge in. And I also like to leave a lot of space for students to come to those realizations on their own, you know, and and not, you know, shove it down their throats (laughs) because I think it's, it's inevitable that people reflect on how, what they're doing on the canvas is showing up in their life and vice versa. It's really, it just not happens quite naturally. It sounds like painting with you is such a transformational process. I I hope so. And I, and I, I do believe it is often. And I, I, You know, I think ultimately my two passions in life are the creative process and self-transformation. And Mm -hmm. I've been interested in both worlds for a very long time. And I, it really wasn't, to be honest, until I started teaching painting that I realized how directly it was all related. You know, I always kind of thought like, well, I've got my my spiritual practice and my self-growth kind of world over here. And then I've got my painting world over here. And it was like... <laughs> it's all my, compartmentalized. <laughs> it's all compartmentalized, which is like hilarious to me now. But, you know, it was really an exciting realization when I started to see all of the ways that they informed each other. It was really cool. Mm. I think that's just satisfying in life, right? When your passions start to overlap and they start to support each other in different ways. It's like, oh, it's not, it's not all separate. You know, the painting is a spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. And so it's been, yeah, a beautiful, always unfolding kind of a realization. And I'm constantly getting new levels of insight into that. Mm, That sounds fantastic. So Flora, what would you say would be your top tips on how people can follow their creative intuition, whether in art or in life or in business or in whatever? Because I think as we've seen, there's so many parallels. That's a great question. Well, I think listening and honing intuition, because I always think of intuition just like a muscle, you know, where it's Mm -hmm. really something that you just have to practice. And the more you put attention there, the 
easier it becomes. You know, just even having that realization that, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to tune into my intuition. That's huge. You know, that's, that's yeah. step one because a lot of people go through life and they just don't even ever think about that. So I think even having the understanding of, or, or honoring the fact that we have intuition, that we have this sixth sense that we, it's not all so black and white always is great. And then quieting the mind, I think is, is step number one. You know, we are step number two. We, <laughs> We live in such a fast paced, busy, you know, verbal, you know, mind chattery kind of world these days that I think really making those conscious efforts to whether it's meditation on a meditation cushion, or if it's just pausing throughout your day and taking a couple deep breaths and kind of tuning inward. I think, you know, our intuition is not loud, usually, like I think of it as quite a humble, subtle, quiet voice that we have. I think it's a voice of our highest good. You know, it's, it's always trying to tell us what is best for us, really. But it can be so overshadowed by fear, by mind chatter, by other people's opinions, that if we don't really give ourselves some space up in our, in our minds and in our hearts and in our bodies, then, then there's much less of a chance that those inner voices are going to be heard. So those are a few beginning steps. And then I just think um, learning to trust those voices is the next piece of it. It's like you can hear them and then what you do with them is a whole nother question, right? So trusting them, whether that is, you know, something that feels a little crazy and out of your comfort zone or, or not, it's the more you trust, the more I think the more clear the voices become. And, you know, there's practices. I do a practice I called intuitive wandering with my students, which is just, you know, walk out your front door and give yourself the opportunity to go on a walk or a drive or whatever. And every time you come to an intersection, pause and listen in and feel your body. You know, I always put like a hand on my heart, a hand on my belly, and I feel into where am I being drawn right now? Because usually we just go through life knowing exactly where we're going, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so if you can actually give yourself that pause and then follow through with what direction you're going, it's just this interesting, tangible experience that I think is a great, simple way to practice listening. And then again, when you step in front of a canvas, you know, take those pauses while you look at your colors and make your choices and ask yourself, what are you really drawn to? Like, what is your soul craving here Mm -hmm. instead of what is my intellectual the color, my opinionated mind about what (laughs) colors are going to look good together want it. You know, it's like, what are you really craving on a deeper level? So Mm. so many ways to, to practice it. Yeah. And I think that's, it's, it can be really, really challenging to get out of your head and into your heart and your gut and your body. Oh yeah. Mm. Very much so. We're not, we're not, we're not taught to really, Mm -hmm. you know, we're just not taught to like ever. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's one of my personal missions in my lifetime here is to, is to help bring that, that forth as a, as an important, really, really important form of intelligence. Mm. That's how I see intuition. I think it's crucial that we start to listen in, in those ways. And, and we are, you know, I think people are are getting really more interested in the topic and and starting to open up in a lot of ways. So I think there's progress being made. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Little by little, we're getting there. (laughs) Yep. So, Flora, how can people work with you? You've got a number of different things. You've got e-courses. You've got in-person courses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, the most accessible thing is buying my book. <laughs> That's a maybe good place to start. But I do offer a five-week online course called Bloom True, and I run that about three times a year. And it's a really neat um, international community that comes together for the course. We have a you know, private Facebook groups. So people meet and it's always really cool in the beginning of the course to see all these people chiming in from all over the world that are, and, and everyone's making connections. And I just love that part of it. And I lead people through, yeah, five weeks of painting and, and, and self growth right along, alongside mm-hmm. of it. And then I teach also in person. I've been doing retreats all over the world for the last few years. And I'm now sort of honing into my Portland, Oregon home studio. I rented a new space to teach here and I'm keeping myself at home for the next year to ground out a little bit. So I I teach about six workshops here every year that are four days long. And yeah, a new thing that I'm right in the middle of creating right now, which I'm really excited about is called, it's an offering I'm calling Studio Diaries. And the idea is that I'm just going to do a lot of filming of my painting process. and, And anytime I'm sort of having one of those aha moments, which usually happen when I'm actually painting, um, I'm just going to start turning on the camera and doing 
sort of, you know, very spontaneous sharing of what's, what's truly interesting to me in the moment, um, instead of having a real like produced course that's, you know, like my current course is one thing, but this is going to be more of a ongoing supportive every month you get new content and new videos. So that's soon going to be available on my website. It's not there yet. Excellent. And yeah. you've also got uh, the Bloom True Boot Camp and the Tribe. What, what are those? Yeah. So Bloom True Boot Camp is a program I put together. It's a 30 days of 30 prompts. And it's really for someone who's having the urge to, to get creative, um, whether it's with paint or something else. It's, it's a program that leads people through a journey to, you know, set up their space, everything from setting up their space and getting their supplies to connecting to their intuition and learning a bit more about that, you know, to just seeing, seeing the world through the eyes of an artist really. So it's, um, it's in the form of a PDF currently downloadable 40 page PDF. And it's a, yeah, it's a really neat program. It's really perfect to get primed for the e-course. A lot of people do it that way. And then Bloom True Tribe is basically just, uh, you know, what has happened over the last few years is I've experienced so many people connecting to this process and having these really beautiful transformations, both on the canvas and off. And I hear their stories all the time. I witness their journeys. And I just wanted to create a space to share these stories with other people. So, and to really, you know, connect people in a way where they start to feel like they are part of a creative tribe with anyone else who's done the Bloom True, you know, brave intuitive painting process. And so every Tuesday on my blog, I've been posting a tribe story from one of my students. And I think we're going to develop that whole tribe um, concept a bit more and do some, maybe like an annual gathering and things like that. But Mm. I'm just a big, I'm just a big community advocate. So Mm. I'm trying to weave together ways where I can bring, bring more people together, create more connections. Sounds very exciting. Yeah. So coming back to your book, which sold over 30,000 copies, which is very, very impressive. (laughs) um, What can people expect to get from your book in case they're interested in, in starting there? Well, you know, it's interesting. I was asked to write the book after I taught my very first workshop, which was a real nice affirmation around sharing this work. And so really what the book is, is like an it's a taste of this process. And again, it, it weaves together actual painting techniques with quite a bit of, you know, just ideas of how to bring the ideas of being brave, being intuitive into your life. So yeah, it's, it's got lots of pretty pictures, <laughs> <laughs> lots of, lots of exercises and um, people just re- have responded really well to the book. I think it's a great first taste of, you know, the work that I offer. Excellent. And you also have a number of products on your website. You've got all kinds of things with your art on them. Yeah, I do. I know. Licensing, it's an whole big world out there. It's it's honestly not where my like first and foremost passions lie, but it's a very fun um, pursuit to be involved with. I work with a couple of really great companies that I have wonderful relationships with. And they make, yeah, all kinds of fun products, tote bags and mm. journals and things. And so it's, it's a great way, I think, to share, you know, the image, imagery in a way that's like functional for people to have the art in their life. So yeah, I think it's a gorgeous way of having just really beautiful items with artwork on them. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's really fun. <laughs> So why not have a painting on your laptop case? I mean, exactly. Come on. <laughs> or in your makeup bag or on your nope, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Flora, do you have any women mentors, either in art or business or anywhere in your life? Are there any women who inspire you? Oh my gosh, yes. I'm a big I'm a big fan of of women <laughs> and and community and sisterhood and and all the support that that is there and I'm really fortunate to have a quite a wonderful community of fellow artists and people who teach as well. And a few of them that live, you know, around me here are Kelly Ray Roberts and Pixie Lighthorse, who used to be Pixie Campbell, but changed her name recently. Those two are huge mentors. Um, Rachel Rice is someone I work with who's, who's also a great peer. Lindsay Lynx. These are all, these are all my people. I just, I've been doing a new interview series for my e-course where I'm just chatting with some of these folks because I, I love bringing in more voices. You know, I, I feel like 
I can tell you how I think, but there's so many great conversations that come up between me and, you know, my fellow artist peer women. So I've been, I'm interviewing Melody Ross is another person and yeah, who else am I interviewing? Oh, Alina Hennessy. So those are some names and I can't say enough about, you know, reaching out and creating those connections and support networks, especially as women artists, you know, it's, I don't know what I would do without them. <laughs> Crucial. Yeah, excellent. So, Flora, is there anything else you'd like to share with us about how to follow your creative intuition or just get in touch with that brave, intuitive process of both art and life? You know, ultimately, I think when it it comes down to self-love, like if I have to just like boil it all down around what I feel like I'm teaching or hoping to teach is just this idea of trusting and loving yourself and remembering your worthiness and knowing that your story is worth telling and trusting that you have a unique, a unique voice and trusting that that unique voice will come through if you show up and do the work. And I can't emphasize that enough, just whether it's business or painting or anything else, baby steps, you know, uh, knowing that it's a journey, not expecting everything to happen all at once. Remembering that intuition is, is a muscle that we flex and strengthen over time. And I just encourage people to really bring their most authentic selves forward. Even if that seems scary or out of the box or unique, it's probably what will serve you the most. Mm. Excellent, excellent advice. I was just making notes on that as you were speaking. Oh, <laughs> so perfect. All right. So Flora, where can people find you online if they want to learn more about you or connect with you on social media? My website is definitely the hub. Um, so florabowley.com. And all my social media links are on there and my blog. And I'm about to have a new website in about a month. So very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. This was really fun. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thank you for listening. And remember to visit readytobloom.com forward slash 83 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to the Ready to Bloom podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. If you enjoyed this episode, remember to head over to iTunes and leave us a quick review of this podcast. Thank you.